You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. Welcome back. Now, it should be pointed out before we continue our conversation with the mayor that every effort was made to have his election opponent, Stephen Sanders, on the show. But after several days of waiting, Sanders' campaign person told us the candidate was just too busy, even though we provided several possible days for him to spare a few minutes. We wanted to ask about his specific budget plans to expand business growth in certain areas of the city and how we would handle the continuing coronavirus response and ask why certain watchdog groups are angry with him for how he portrays his military service. But our friend Chad Hasty did a great job with the debate between these two last week on KFYO. You can check out that debate on their website and their YouTube page as well. Mr. Sanders did join a protesters last week at a building being renovated by Planned Parenthood with the intent of opening a new clinic here this month. It's a 6,300 square foot former dental facility in near Memphis in 22nd place. This, as the city secretary continues to try and verify the 5,700 signatures turned in to try and force the city council to vote on proclaiming the city a sanctuary city for the unborn to keep Planned Parenthood from performing abortions here. An outside law firm advised the council that such an ordinance would be violating state law and would leave the city open to legal liability. So let's talk about this with the mayor for five more good minutes. What's your relationship like with state leaders right now with Perry and Burroughs and Furlo and, and others out there? Uh, I would say that it's, um, it's with, with Mr. Furlo, it's, it's, it's very good. We talk all the time. I, mm -hmm. I say I have, a, I have a professional relationship with Senator Perry. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when we need each other, we're very, he's accessible, and I, and I am too. I've not had much conversation or any conversation with, with, uh, with Representative Burroughs in the last uh, uh, period of time. Not, not the issue itself, but the politics of that proposal that they gave you, and when I say you, I mean you and the, and the city council, and the visuals they put together, it looked from the outside like, here are the state guys trying to flex on the local guys a little bit. Am I, am I wrong with that? I don't think so. Yeah. No, not at all. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to balance um, a conservative state legislature who's taken so much power away from municipalities uh, turning around and saying, hey, we haven't taken care of this, but we want you to do it. Right. I saw there was a Facebook group called Laser that referred to you specifically as someone who supported Planned Parenthood opening here. Yeah, that's not true. And it gets, yeah, it gets around yeah. Facebook. You know how that yeah. goes. Yeah. What, what's your feeling on Planned Parenthood and abortions being performed in Lubbock? Well, I, I don't, first of all, pro, I'm pro-life. Mm -hmm. I don't want Planned Parenthood in our community. Um, I think there's a much better alternative to an, a problem pregnancy. Um, I made a statement on a radio show that I probably should have said a little differently. Um, but, you know, the city has no licensing responsibility around uh, medical facilities, um, whether it's a hospital or an, an emergency room or, or a physician's office uh, or Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood for that matter. I mean, as long as they uh, follow the zoning laws um, and, I guess, comply with environmental health, then, you know, it's, uh, that, that's our role in something like that. Mm -hmm. The state licenses Covenant. The state licenses the providers at Covenant, the nurses, the, uh, the physicians. Um, and they license long-term care facilities they license our nursing homes the city doesn't really have a, a role in that in fact the state constitution makes it, un, it 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 speaks very clearly that municipalities are not to create laws uh you know extending medical pr uh, privileges tell people why go to the time and expense then of, of bringing the outside law firm olson and olson for an opinion on this at that point. well one of our local delegations suggested that uh uh, that our city attorney's office was, you know, sort of captive to the council, that they would do what we wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted a, a separate set of eyes. Olson Olson just does municipal law. Well, uh, uh, they don't do any private sector work. They right. do uh, cities, counties, appraisal districts, uh, that, that's, uh, maybe some school districts. So in that regard, we're not getting somebody who's got their hand on, you know, on, 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 you know in, in both sides. Uh, that's why we reached out to them. Uh, we, uh, I found their work to be to be uh, uh, very thorough. Uh, we got a long legal opinion from them. 
And we, we released what we thought were the key reasons behind that uh, in our not taking a step forward. You saw it went around on social media. Was there any vetting done on people who worked there, backgrounds or relatives of people who worked there, anything like that? Uh, I, I did not do that. This, the city attorney reached out to them. Uh, Art Pertal was the gentleman that, that was our attorney in this. He's a uh, was at one point was the city attorney of Waco. He's been with Olson and Olson for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. His ties to Planned Parenthood are um, that there was a, at one point the city of Waco had a, an ordinance around protesting in, uh, and some some protesters in front of Planned Parenthood were arrested uh, 15 years ago. He defended the city. He defended their ordinance. That's how he's pulled into this. Uh, it would be hard to find someone who's been in, you know, in the, in the city business that hasn't touched with this if you've had a, a long career. Mr. Pertile's our age. He's been at it a while. And, yeah. and, uh, but other than that, uh, uh, you know, certainly you vet conflicts. And, mm -hmm. and uh, um, the other connection from Olson and Olson to Planned Parenthood was that the cousin of one of the founders um, um, is, mar is an attorney in Waco and is married to uh, a lady who is on the board of Planned Parenthood in, in uh, Central Texas. I mean, I, um, uh, yeah, it would be great if there was none of that. There's, mm -hmm. there's 40 attorneys at their firm. Yeah. Um, I would imagine if you started running down the, 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 the bios of, of all of them, you could find uh, a number of associations that might make you, you know, raise your eyebrows. Okay, so, so they tell you that proclaiming Lubbock as a sanctuary city for the unborn uh, would not work with Texas law. But you know what? Why not do it anyway? You, you'd earn the cheers and votes of most of the masses here. Sure, there would likely be a lawsuit or ten, but you think you couldn't get every church in the tri-county area to do a, a special offerings by the week to pay the attorneys on that deal? And that's even if you didn't use the guy that uh, Senator Perry said would work on it pro bono. Why not do it? I took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and the state of Texas. And when I read the, the legal opinion we, we, we received, it makes it very clear to me that passing that ordinance would uh, violate, uh, would go against that oath that I took. I he, think, let me talk about the attorney that's okay. been offered too. Um, he's probably a very good attorney. I've done a little research on him. I, I don't know the gentleman. He wrote this ordinance. Mm -hmm. He's been involved in writing the ordinance. Um, it, it just, it doesn't pass the smell test with me that we would hire someone free, somebody would provide their services free but we would not be paying them. We would not have have gone through the process of deciding who would represent us on mm -hmm. something like this. Hey, it'd be uh, if I got into a legal dispute with you, and and you said, hey, I, but I got I got an attorney that'll do your deal free for you. And and that doesn't <laughs> right. that doesn't you know that I don't think the citizens elected us to make decisions like that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my position. All right. So now we have the petition that's up, and the, if the signatures are verified by the city secretary, yeah. and this comes to a vote, how does that work? What happens here? So I, I think uh, we, I talked to the city secretary's office uh, midweek. Uh, I believe by early next week they'll be probably uh, uh, ready to validate that, that, that. We we have no reason to believe they won't have the. They turned in nearly 6,000 signatures. They they only had to get 3,600 and something. So mm -hmm. I would imagine the petition will become a, um, would be legit. She she would certify to, that to us at the next regular council meeting. So. Um, likely the first meeting in, in uh, November. Um, uh, like anything else, it's got to be put on the agenda. It's got to right. be posted. It's, it's got to follow that process. So that would we're going to meet uh, the first and third weeks of November uh, because of the Thanksgiving holiday. So it'd be that first meeting in November. Um, after she certifies that, then the council has 30 days to have a public hearing on the ordinance uh, and to consider the ordinance. Um, if the council approved it, then it would go the way of any ordinance we would, would take two readings and right. uh, it would be, become part of the um, city city code uh, if the council doesn't approve it if it um, then it would uh, uh, my understanding is it would then be, go to a, a vote of the citizens a referendum which would be at the next uh, uniform election date so is that what you'd like to see happen let, let everyone vote on this kind of thing or does, does it need to go that far 
I don't, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I still have the same concerns about the ordinance, whether it's the council voting on it or citizens voting on it. And we thank the mayor for his time with us this week. More on that in a second. We will be back with a final word.